Hi, my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and after the uh, rant, not rant, the whole video about uh, two strokes of shiny honesty, a lot of people said, ah, oh, two stroke diesels and so on and so forth, and that's a very good point, yes, and we went through all that kind of malarkey. So I just wanted to quickly talk about two stroke diesels. Now, two stroke diesels are very efficient, and two stroke diesels kind of take a lot of their aspects from the two stroke cycle to night sleeves to crosshead bearings, valves, they just basically generally take all the best bits from a lot of different engines. Um, some of it's from steam engines, some of it's from four strokes with their poppet valves, you know, some of it's from two strokes, the actual process, the cycle is two stroke, uh, they use generally superchargers and stuff like that. Um, so here I've done a very, very quick crew drawing of a two stroke diesel and the way they work is obviously it's a compression cycle um, because it's a diesel so they need injectors um, and diesels are direct injectors so that's a DI and they have a poppet valve or sometimes they can have more than one but the valve, the poppet valve inside a diesel two-stroke is the exhaust only so this is an exhaust valve Getting better at drawing, <laughs> writing <laughs> with these stupid pens. Um, then you have a crosshead bearing, and a crosshead bearing is something that they nicked from trains. Crosshead should write head. Crosshead bearing. This is basically like the old night sleeve. Uh, G H T sleeve. And the way this basically works is you do not use crankcase. Um, pressurization some of them do actually I must admit some of them actually do but generally what they do is they have a supercharger which is fitted off here like so and it's usually a roots blower type so it's a two lobes like so really badly drawn you know and then this is what they have they have a supercharger and they need a supercharger to actually pump air from outside into the actual engine. As the piston descends, the piston descends and it descends on this rod, which is then linked through the crosshead bearing to the crankshaft, uh, to the con rod to the crankshaft. Now the reason why you have a, a crosshead bearing and generally why they have crosshead bearings for massive diesels and ships and so on is because because these components are so heavy, you know, the pistons we're talking about half a ton or even a ton stuff like that um, the side loading from the piston slap of the piston being pushed against one side of the cylinder to another would one cause you know it causes wear but number two is the forces and because this has so much inertia and so much force behind it and so much momentum uh, in the crankshaft and stuff would actually do um, some real harm it also makes the engine vibrate quite violently and it would all turn to mud and shit so they use a crosshead bearing, so basically this bearing is like a it's like a secondary piston. It has rings on it, it seals, and it's to take the side loading out. So as the rod is rocking backwards and forwards, it causes slight movement in the, the crosshead bearing, but the bearing has a bigger uh, surface a surface contact with the actual inside of the cylinder, and then all of that um, left-right motion, if you want to call it that, that left-right swinging about is taken out so the piston does not receive any of that. This piston is just allowed to go completely linearly. It's just allowed to go up and down with no side loading and what have you. Um, so the crosshead bearing is very well oiled and what have you and um, that transfers this linear motion of going down to the con rod which then you know, translates that into rotational motion. Uh, as the piston descends, it uncovers these ports, which is part of like the night sleeve design from back in 18 God knows when. Um, obviously the supercharger is then pumping air past the piston, so the piston will be here, so this can fill the entire cylinder. And then as um, the piston starts to ascend, it closes off these ports, and we have what you call a uniflow system, basically the exhaust valve opens, when these ports are uncovered. So the flow from the supercharger comes in and it pushes all the exhaust gases out of the exhaust valve. Then you close this valve just before these ports are closed off. The, su the uh, supercharger then finishes off filling the cylinder and then the piston starts 
climbing back up again. So it's kind of like it's uh, it's like a two stroke. You have loads of processes going on at once. As the piston comes up, it compresses all the the uh, air inside here. Fuel is in is injected, and because of compression ignition, the um, combustion temperature is reached. And bang, you get your power stroke. As it's pushing the piston down, the exhaust valve opens because it's high pressure in here. Some of it pisses out the exhaust. As soon as these ports are opened, the uh, slight pressure increase, the slight pressurisation that the supercharger has managed, pushes all this gas and pushes all that out of the uh, out of the exhaust valve. So this is the uniflow system as well as a crosshead bearing and all the rest of it. It is in a very efficient system because one, they use diesel. Number two is you um, the engines have really long, long longevity because they can oil everything properly. Um, there is frictional losses with the actual crosshead bearing, obviously. There's more weight, so your piston and the rod and your crosshead bearing is a lot heavier than, say, just a crank crate, crankcase breathing two-stroke. Obviously, you also then have to have a supercharger, which is a parasitic loss on the system. It is a parasitic loss completely as the supercharger because you have to have the supercharger not to create additional boost, just to make the whole system work. And because this is driven off the engine, because there's a belt, uh, not a belt, use its gears or chain, use its gears in this case because there's such heavy machinery, it is just a parasitic loss on the system. Um, so yeah, it's, but as you can see, it's very efficient because it completely gets rid of all the exhaust gases by flowing air completely through the system, the uniflow system, which is completely flushing the cylinder. Then the exhaust gas uh, valve can close and then shortly, pretty much straight after, or not long after, the um, night sleeve ports are blocked off by the piston. Then complete compression can uh, you know complete compression can occur. So you're talking like a volumetric efficiency of around about ninety percent. You're hovering around there. Um, so as you can see, it's in a very efficient system because of the crosshead bearing. It doesn't wear and it doesn't vibrate and wreck itself uh, in the same way that a regular two-stroke or four-stroke would. Um, Everything is oiled properly, there are some parasitic losses, but if you fine tune and optimise everything, you can make this an extremely efficient engine. And when they build giant ships, you know, the whole point of building a massive ship is so you can get as much cargo on it as possible so it's more efficient. So they're trying to make a long lasting, um, a very reliable, long lasting, very efficient engine. And the biggest one in the world, that, that building of an engine, um, you know, it, its highest RPM is 102. You know, it's quite slow going, but the amount of volume of air that it can consume, and the amount of power that it, you know, that it extracts from that, its efficiency is really, really high. Um, why haven't two-stroke diesels like this been used for cars? Simply because of the parasitic losses, the supercharger and the crosshead bearing, the friction between the bearing and the actual cylinder, the cost and all the rest of it. These engines, because of their mass, cannot rev that fast. So you've noticed over the years that diesels, you know, from like a transit van back in the 1970s till now, the transits now will rev higher, especially for diesels. They rev higher, they're more like petrols than they are diesels because of redu uh, reductions in weight and stuff. Because at the end of the day, if you want high RPM, you want your uh, components to rotate fast you want them to be lightweight because less energy is used trying to get them to go that fast. The other thing obviously with pistons is if you're going up and down you need to be able to stop that piston. If it's really heavy then its momentum uh, is going to put a lot of strain on the components when you come to stop it. Um, but that's uh, two-stroke diesel they are quite amazing. There's a few different ways of doing this if people want me to cover them as well. Uh, there is different types of two-stroke diesels but generally, I just wanted to show you the one that has, is all singing, all dancing, and is um, really quite efficient. Right, I hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.